the next installment of our rendering a web GPU triangle video. Our next step is to start setting up our vertex buffer and start pumping in some vertices. So what we can actually do just to get us started is we can take this code here. So now if I pop into VS code, we can see our code from the last video. And I'll go ahead here and just in within our init function up here, I'm going to copy and paste all this code in here. So what do we have here? I, I think ultimately, you know, we're, we're starting to actually get to how our triangle will be represented in our application, which is super important, defining the shaders and how those shaders take in these vertices it's pretty neat, but we have to start here. We have to start with this vertices array. And I set it up in a way where we can see that there are three different lines. And you can imagine if we're rendering a triangle that each line represents one of the points of the triangle. If we look at the first line, we see negative one, negative one, zero, one, one, zero, zero, one. And it's not so obvious what exactly all these numbers mean. Uh, you know, I left the comment here and it says bottom left red. I've also left another comment up here that gives a little bit of a hint that each vertex has a position and a color packed in memory in X, Y, Z, W, R, G, B, A order. Okay, great. Still a little confusing. But what we can actually do is we can open up my Inkscape and we can actually look at this diagram to better understand what is going on. So ultimately the final drawing that we want to have here is is this triangle that we see and at the center of this triangle we can imagine that it's the coordinate systems origin. So if you're familiar with coordinate systems in general you know that the center is zero 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 and that's ultimately what we consider to be the origin of the coordinate system. What I've done here is I've mapped these different values. So if we look at the bottom left here. We can see that it's negative one, negative one, zero, one. If we look down here, I, I added a little bit of a, a guide. We can say, okay, the first number is the X position. So just like in a typical coordinate system, negative one in the X direction goes to the left. And then the Y direction is also negative one. So that puts us down here to this bottom left corner. You'll see here, which is super important, is if you look at the fourth coordinate, we have this W coordinate. I will include a link to a blog post that explains this pretty thoroughly. But for now, we're just going to set it to one. Secondly, the other thing is we have our RGBA values and that will be used in the fragment shader to color our points. So as you can see here, if we have RGBA, each value is between zero and one. So one here means completely red, green is zero, blue is zero, and our A is our alpha channel. That is opacity is going to be one. So we can expect this just to be red. So over here, it'll be blue. And you might be asking yourself, well, it looks like as we go from, say, the right eye, which is all blue, to the red, you'll see that it becomes a little bit of a purple here in the middle. And that has to do with interpolation amongst our vertices. Our GPU is very smart and is able to interpolate color as it goes from our right vertice over to our left vertice. So now if we scroll down to line 58, we can see that we're creating a vertex buffer. And what's different from our vertices array up here, we are getting our device, which is our connection to the GPU essentially, and we are creating a buffer on the GPU. Now, what you'll see here is that we have three different arguments, but what we can actually do now is we can start with size. And size is, well, exactly what we expect the size of the buffer. The next field I want to look at is this usage field. And you can see here that I have GPU buffer usage dot vertex and GPU buffer usage dot 
copy DST. I believe that is destination. Uh, what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to include a link here. I will open this URL. So what we've done is we've used vertex and copy dist. So if we scroll down here, we can actually see what exactly it is we're doing. Vertex is making it so that uh, the buffer can be used as a vertex buffer, which makes sense because, well, we're passing in vertices. And we can also go to copy dist and we can read this. The buffer can be used as the destination of a copy or write operation. That's exactly what we'll be doing in the next step. We can now get a better look at map that creation. So I think ultimately the next thing we need to talk about is what does it mean when a buffer is mapped and what does it mean when a buffer is unmapped? Well, when it's mapped, it means that our application and our CPU can actually write to the buffer that's on the GPU. So what we're doing here in line 63, we call this function get mapped range. And what exactly is happening here? And what it's doing is that it's returning an array buffer with the contents of the GPU buffer in the given mapped range. We then can call dot set vertices. And what that's doing is that it's copying our vertices up here and copying it into the buffer. And then when we're done, we call vertex buffer dot unmap, which is now unmapping the buffer in our GPU. That's basically saying, hey, I only want the GPU now to read this. So the one thing, and we'll see this especially in the next video, but I just want to touch up on it here is that, well, if we go back to our vertices. Like I said, you know, we're, we're, we are packing in memory all of our data into one array. However, if we scroll down, when we're passing this to the shader, we need to tell the shader, hey, this is what these values mean with our vertex buffer descriptors, what that data actually represents. So we have our attributes here, and I think what it might help if we write this down as position and color. So now let's take a look at our attributes one by one. So at shader location zero, now this will make sense when we actually write our shader. Just believe me for now, we're just going to set it to zero. At offset position zero, which is we can imagine our very, very first value, we are writing our position values. And the format will be float 32 by four. And that makes sense because we have one two, three, four floats. Similarly, we also can do the same thing for color. And this time we're going to set the shader location to one. And now we have an offset of 16. And that makes sense because each float is four bytes and we have four floats in our list. So we're going to offset these four bytes and we're going to start here. Now we're going to start at this one, two, three, four. So now, Finally, if we go back down, we have array stride and we're basically saying, hey, over 32 bytes, what we want to do is we want to have the same thing happen. So if we say, OK, we have 32 bytes here, then do that again for the next 32 bytes and do that again for the next 32 bytes. So finally, we have step mode as vertex. And what exactly is step mode? Well, ultimately, it means that we're considering this array stride here of 32 bytes to be considered a vertex. So if we consider our attributes here. We have position and we have color. Each are 16 bytes each. Therefore, for every 32 bytes, we can consider our position and our color. These 32 bytes to be considered a vertex to be processed by the vertex shader. So I hope that all makes sense. And in the next video, we'll see what exactly these shader locations are doing when we write our vertex and our fragment shader. So until then, I will see you in the next video.